So this is a TP52 Coa, one of around 10 TP52s at uh, the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia. It's a far design goats built TP52. Just taken the boat cover off. Um, the boat comes with a great set of racing sails, complete racing sails. Um, a set of cruising sails, delivery sails as well. Twin wheels. Um, all of the ropes um, are kept in a container until regatta race days. Uh, this is a race day, so we're just setting up. So we've got some of the new ropes on already. Um, but they're basically in excellent condition and there's plenty of secondhand spares floating around the vessel. Um, we carry BNG 500 processor um, with uh, Garmin displays and a BNG central display back in the uh, middle of the cockpit just here. There's a central main uh, sheet winch, which is this one. And that's the hydraulics which you're looking at, um, which pumps up the force stay. Everything's been serviced um, very regularly and all in super good condition. Uh, the mast displays, there's four on the mast there, you can just see them next to the vang. This is the main block of cleats for the pit person. Um, there's three halyard locks, one on the jib, uh, two on the spinnakers, all work with fun, the bullets in good shape. Uh, cabin top winches for the pit person, uh, primary winch, runner winch, and obviously the wheels. Um, twin wheels, uh, twin backstays going forward. Jib tracks, uh, just a wear plate just for the, uh, for the jib, for inhauling the jib. Um, right through to the front of the boat, where we can see the bow spread. There's how you'd set up. Looking up the rig, it's a dual spreader rig or carbon um, haul SC6 uh, stays uh, with titanium uh, fittings for the turnbuckles. So all super light. The boat was completely stripped in 2013. Um, and then again in 2015 when we bought it, it was stripped in 2013 and IRC optimized. Um, that process was repeated when we bought the boat in 2015. And again, just before the last Sydney to Hobart, which um, was in 2019, where we pulled pretty much everything off the boat, the keel, the rudder and everything else, just to ensure that the boat was ready for the Hobart race. We'll show you down below in due course. Um, we're just coming up to the polars and so forth. Obviously we've got all those polars plugged into uh, the instruments and uh, they come up on the heads up displays. Okay, so we're back on board Koa. We're gonna have a look down below first. So going down the companionway, um, all the floorboards um, are carbon, so super light throughout the boat. Coming through here to the nav, uh, sorry, the, uh, the galley, um, three burner stove there. We just put the gas bottles on when we're at sea, obviously at gimbals, plenty of storage on that side. Um, we've put these handrails on the boat on both sides just for an extra safety feature. They're fully carbon safety feature for when we're offshore. And if we look up here, there's the reaching strut. Hard to see from here, but we just store it in here and retrieve it when required um, for reaching. Um, looking down the, the starboard side of the boat, looking backwards, um, uh, sort of two bunks here, five bunks in total down the side, all, all carbon uh, bunks. Uh, we, we store the anchors under the floorboards here. It obviously goes back some way. Now I'm gonna to come to the nav station what you'll see here is all the instruments and so forth, but there's the, uh, there's the screen for the computer. It's 
currently got Expedition up. Next to that is a GPS screen, VHF, sat phone, um, the radio, uh, various controls for the displays, light switches, etc. on off um, going through there. Um, engine is under here, but we'll come back to that. If we look at this uh, nav station, it pivots to either side. So you can always be on weather when you're playing with the, uh, uh, with the uh, computer. Um, coming back in the boat, again looking down on the left side here, hard to see, but uh, we've got another two bunks. So there's four so far. And then the right hand side, immediately behind the nav station, is all the, uh, the various panels for the engine, for the, uh, for the various switches and so forth. Batteries are under here, engine uh, start and kill switches and so forth in here as well. Uh, we have uh, dry storage in here, um, plenty of storage there, um, keeping coming back. Uh, we come back to this area here. Again, all the lights run the whole way through, red lights and so forth. Um, as you can see, an aluminium fuel tank. Um, the computer drive is up here on the roof. Um, the hydraulics for the four-stay ram, that's where the oil is. There's a bilge pump manual down here. And again, this is a storage area where we typically keep the cool box um, for when we're offshore racing. Going further aft, and this is a little bit tricky, but there's the final and fifth bunk on this side. More storage here. And we're coming down to the quadrant area. So just bear with me as I, as I climb through. We have these uh, um, uh, protectors up here to ensure that nothing falls into the quadrant. But as you can see, over here, there's the quadrant. Um, the auto helm mounts on the port side. Uh, the unit on the top there is where the auto helm goes into. Um, you've got the HF and Wi-Fi box at the back there, all the way through to the aft of the boat. All carbon, all black, all, all nice paint. Not paint, carbon at least. All the way through to the aft end of the boat. And you should see that it's watertight and in fairly good condition. We're gonna go back now and have a look at the engine and the other side of the boat. Okay, this is the second video of the inside of Kawa. And um, we've got storage here behind uh, those zipped compartments um, going up. Obviously there's storage under the bunks. This is again looking aft. Um, they're the two um, bunks on the port side, then, then mid bunks and so forth. We're coming back down here to where the port side um, nav station is. And obviously the nav station's facing the other way, but we just wanted to give you a profile of the engine. Um, you can see the engine's very clean, works functionally. has been overhauled a couple of times, good shape. Um, further instrumentation here. That's your um, HF radio, a speaker, various uh, voltmeters and so forth through there. And then coming back through here, again, you get a fairly clear perspective through to the back of the boat, which you've already seen from the other side. But let's just have a quick look at the, the panels here. And you can see the various switchboards there and the cutoffs. VHF storage, etc. Okay, welcome back to Koa. We're going forward now. What we're looking at is the uh, the mast jack, and if we pan forward to the front of the mast, um, what you can see there is that the mast is on a sliding track uh, that allows us to adjust the the foot position, and obviously the jack allows us to change the shims. Um, currently, there's two. 20 mil shims in there and uh, we go up from there um, with four different shims depending on the wind conditions and change the the rake um, at the base there as well by adjusting 
this screw right down the back here on the boat. Um, if we go back and we're on the port side at the moment, I've just opened up a couple of the lockers there. See, there's plenty of room in those lockers for storage. There's one up the top as well. Again, hand holds the whole way through. And then we're looking at the rope locker there, um, which has currently got a bunch of ropes in. But again, all of our race ropes we keep in the container. And there are endless numbers of spares in terms of ropes and infrastructure to use if you're not doing any serious racing. Um, right in front of the mast, well, first of all, we have the head. Not much to look at there, but that's actually a privacy screen which has been fitted to the boat. Um, there, that can be taken out. There's various curtains if people want to use them, we tend not to use them. Um, going down here, you can see where the log and the depth fittings are, obviously both currently out. And the carbon box is the whole way through. Uh, looking forward, um, three ribs, uh, first rib, second rib, and then final rib up the bow. We tend to race with most of our gear back rather than on the numbers which you see there with the PFDs currently hanging on them. But um, uh, most of the time that bow area is completely free. Now that rib adds additional strength for offshore racing, which is quite important in these TPs. If we look up, um, the hatch here um, is a retrofitted hatch. It's out of New Zealand or carbon. Just gave us a bit more space to get kites up and down, better edges and so forth. Um, and you can see that it's, it's well fitted there. Going forward, uh, the rope which you see running along the floor is for the jib tack. That's the only thing which runs inside. The boat's fairly dry with most of the ropes running external, um, which is a good thing for offshore racing. And then we're going forward right to the very bow area here. Might be a little hard to see, I'm just bringing the light forward, so bear with us. Hopefully in a minute. But what you're seeing, and we'll come in much closer in a minute. What you're seeing there is a hydraulic ram. Uh, that hydraulic ram was fully serviced in December last year, pre-Hobart, like everything else on the boat with the rudder, um, the keel, and all other aspects taken off the boat for full servicing. Now we adjust our four-stay rake um, when we're racing. And um, what you can see there is just the graduations. On that, here comes the light. Um, oops, light keeps coming out. We're not gonna get the light, but basically uh, that's the hydraulic ram right through to the bow area up the front there. Apologies that the light's not as good as it could be, but that's, that's about as good as we can do on the light up this end of the boat. Yeah, and that hydraulic ram basically adjusts from um, up on the deck and obviously under IRC now you can fully adjust that um, whilst racing. So that's it. Looking back in the boat, gives you some perspective.